Hey, do you wish your house looked like this? I got you! Today I'm going to show you how to build this rustic house step by step and the best part is whether you decide to use sits or not, it's still gonna look good. And if you need a little bit more guidance, the world download link is in the description along with the materials list, resource packs and shaders, so let's jump right into it. Hi guys, it's Mimi and we're starting out with the layout so go ahead and copy it real quick and I recommend using Cars Dirt to outline the shape. This house was built in collaboration with Snipperly, she's a super talented builder so make sure to give her all the love she deserves. Right, onto the building. First we're taking granite and placing it randomly on the white and yellow outline. Then we'll fill in the gaps with polished granite and that's going to give us a nicely texturized base for our build. Oh and when I said randomly I meant it, it doesn't really matter which blocks are going to be granite and which ones are going to be polished granite and keep that in mind while gathering the materials. Pick one material that you have the most of and then use the rest to texturize. Next we're taking white concrete and we're going to outline our build, leaving a one block gap for the window. Keep in mind that we're going to texturize each wall we're now building later on, so after you get the shape right, you can start filling it in with endstone bricks, calcite, double slabs of endstone bricks and diorite, so that you don't have to build it all and then break it again. Although texturizing is not a necessary step here and you can easily skip it if you wish, the variation in texture will make the build much more interesting for the eye. And now we're going to replicate the same shape on the other side, however this time we're going to make a two block wide gap for the window. Next we are going to connect these two walls we just built and we're going to leave a two by one gap for the door. On the other side we are going to connect the walls as well, however this time we're going to leave some spaces for the windows. Next we are going to move on to the other part of the build. We are going to build a wall on the right side, leaving a gap for the door and for the window. We are going to replicate that shape on the left side, but because this part of the build is going to be mostly covered by the roof, we are not going to leave any gaps this time. Next we're going to build the front wall, leaving 2x2 two two gaps for the doorways, 2x1 two gap for the window and then 3 more gaps, each one by one for the windows. On the other side we're not going to leave any space for the doors, but we're going to replicate the same pattern for the top 3 windows. You may notice that the window pattern on this side looks irregular because on the right we now have a two block gap, but we'll fix it later with shutters by creating an optical illusion. That's going to make it seem as if it's a one block gap instead, so don't worry about it. Alright, time to texturize. As I said before, for that purpose we are going to use endstone bricks, calcite, double slabs of endstone bricks and diorite. Slowly but surely you'll be able to see how the textures start nicely blending in together, giving the look of an old rustic wall. Next we're going to take brown stained glass panes and we're going to fill in all of the window gaps. Next up is the man, the legend and my biggest nemesis, the roof. 
<laughs> so yeah, we're going to make a trim out of spruce stairs. We're going to go all across, but also remember to put one more extra stair on each side. And of course, we're going to repeat this pattern on the other side. Now, this part is going to be a little bit tricky. First, we're going to take upside down stairs and then on top of that, we're going to place regular stairs. Then upside down stairs and on top of that, a full block. On top of the block, regular stairs and on the side, upside down stairs and on top of that, a full block. On top of the full block, regular stairs and on the side, upside down stairs facing our direction. And we're going to repeat this full pattern on the other side and we're also going to copy that later onto the second part of the roof. So yeah, you know the drill, we're going to copy what we just did on this part of the roof. Next, we're going to fill in this whole row with red nether brick stairs. And once we do that, we're going to place a row of cut red sandstone. And the cut red sandstone part is later going to be texturized as well, so just keep that in mind. On top of that, we're going to place red nether brick stairs again. And then again a row of full blocks. And then last but not least, red nether bricksters. And now onto the texturizing. So in this case we're going to use red nether bricksters to make it seem as if some bricks are missing. We're going to repeat everything we just did on the other side. Now we're going to place spruce stairs on top of the spruce frame that we just built and to finish it off we're going to use spruce slabs. Alright, one roof down, one roof to go. And we're going to make another trim. So starting with spruce stairs we're going all the way across and again please remember about that one overhanging piece and we're going to repeat that on the other side as well. This time two overhanging pieces, one on each side. And next we're going to build a very simple A-frame. So pretty much you're going to just build more stairs until each side connects together. And of course we're going to repeat that on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we're going to fill in the roof with red nether brick stairs. Now, this last row might be a little bit challenging. You probably will have to drop in inside of the building to be able to finish the roof. chimney time. So first we're going to take two polished granite slabs, then mud brick stairs facing our direction, then we're taking polished granite stairs, and then two granite blocks. And finishing it off with mud brick stairs. On top of the granite block we're placing upside down mud brick stairs, and next to it polished granite. On top of that two granite blocks, and then regular polished granite stairs, one granite block next to it. Next we're going to break spruce stairs that are in the way and we're going to replace it with a mixture of granite and polished granite to make it all nice and texturized. Every now and then you can throw in upside down granite or polished granite stairs again to make it seem as if some bricks are missing. the chimney we're going to place stone brick stairs and we are also going to replace these red nether brick stairs with some more granite and polished granite. On the side of the build we're going to place stone stairs, then stone brick stairs, then again stone stairs, and then andesite stairs. Then we're placing stone bricks, and then andesite. And using these blocks we're going to texturize the rest of the stairway, and we're also going to throw in some smooth stone slabs, and some upside down stone and andesite stairs. Next we're going to place one stone brick wall and one andesite wall. On top of them we're going to place acacia fences and on top of these fences we're going to place three campfires that we are going to extinguish. Next we're going to place a stone wall and an acacia fence on top of that. And once more a stone wall and an acacia fence. Next up on the stairway we are going to place an andesite wall, another acacia fence and three more campfires. You're also going to place two campfires above the windows in the back over here and then one more campfire in the front. Now we are placing upside down andesite stairs, a smooth stone slab, regular stone brick stairs, upside down andesite stairs, a smooth stone slab, regular stone brick stairs, upside down stone stairs, upside down andesite stairs and regular stone brick stairs. After that we are going to place three oak leaves in the front of the window, a rooted dirt next to the side entrance and an oxide daisy on top of it. Next using andesite, gravel and stone bricks we are going to texturize the surrounding area. Also replacing the wool I placed earlier as a guide with dirt. For the floor I used granite in the bigger building and spruce planks in the smaller one. Mm -hmm. 
After the floor is finished, we can place spruce doors in the gaps we left earlier. We're also going to place two chains and a lantern over here. Next we're placing a mixture of oak and azalea leaves to make the roof look more overgrown and we're going to do that on each side of the roof. After that's done, we're going to start using CITs, so if you'd rather stick with vanilla blocks, you can finish off the build with torches and shutters made from spruce trapdoors. For the reference, you can go back to the intro of this video. If you don't know what sits are and how to use them, I recommend checking out this video that I made, because it's a very in-depth guide that will be extremely helpful for people who would like to experiment more with their builds without necessarily using gameplay altering mods. And if you will have any troubles or questions about sets, don't hesitate and join our Discord server where we will help you as soon as possible and where you can also meet some new friends. to the next step of the tutorial, we are going to use Mizuno's Six and Craft CIT's Oak Leaves 2 to decorate all the oak leaves that we just placed. Next, we are placing a spruce trapdoor 2 on our top front windows and on the left of the bottom window, we are placing a spruce trapdoor 0. We are also placing a spruce trapdoor 0 on both visible sides of the rooted dirt. On the side of the building, we are placing another spruce trapdoor 2 and then two more in the back. For the third one, we are using a spruce trapdoor zero instead on each side of the window and that's going to create that optical illusion that I mentioned earlier. We are placing one more here and then moving on to the side, we are placing one spruce trapdoor two, two zeros and one more time the number two. Last but not least, we are placing one more spruce trapdoor zero here and now we can move on to window boxes from Coolcraft CAT. We are placing a daffodil window box and then an orange tulip window box followed by another daffodil window box and we are using the same pattern in the back. Over here we are placing two daffodil ones and then one daffodil, two tulips, one daffodil. And here in the front one more daffodil. Next we're back to Mizuno's and we're placing one egg three on top of the roof. We're going to place some torch for wall lanterns, one here, one here, one here, one over here, and one here. Next are vines from Garden Breeze and Mizuno's. First we're going to place vines named Green Vine 2 all across the front of the build. Once we do that, we will place another one over here, followed by Mizuno's Vines one. Moving on 
on to the side we will place some more garden breeze vines and one more Mizuno's vine and we're going to continue doing so on each wall of the build. Feel free to experiment with these vines, it doesn't have to be perfect. Right, and that's about it for the tutorial. If you want to also add the card, the CIT ID is Hey Card, and it's from Ghoulcraft CIT. Thank you so much for watching, and shout out to all my wonderful Patreons. Gosh, so many of you supported me this month, and I am so thankful for each and every one of you. And if you also would like to access all of my build downloads, feel free to check my description. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.